Yo, what's going on guys? Thanks for stopping by. So today I wanted to show everybody how to take some really good photos on Forza Horizon 5. I know uh, I've been posting pictures and using them as my thumbnails for a long time, um, but I do get a lot of questions of how do you make them look so good? What are your settings? This, that, and the other. Uh, first and foremost, I do have a 3080 and I do play on PC. So, you know, the graphics are on max settings, full extreme for everything and you're gonna end up getting some really good photos. But what some people don't know is there's a whole menu here that you can use to set up things like the time of the day, the weather, car lights, steering, driver. Um, oh, well, driver has to be sitting still. So I think the perfect car to do this with would be the uh, Aston Martin Valkyrie. This just came out with the holiday bundle for Forza Horizon 5. So let's jump right into photo mode. And what we're gonna do is go to the effects and we're just gonna reset everything to default with the X button. Um, so now this is completely default. This is what it looks like with no editing, no nothing. So uh, already it looks really good. Uh, we're in a good part of the map right on the Horizon Festival. So. Pretty much everything is rendered pretty well here. Um, you can use the directional pad up and down to zoom in and out. A little Honda Civic over here, I see you. All right, so Aston Valkyrie 2023. This thing is super cool looking. Uh, so like I said, first and foremost, to take your driver out of the car, you're gonna go down all the way to the bottom and disable the driver. That's me, deleted. Uh, steering, you can change the angle of the steering wheel. Like basically left, right, and center is all you can do. Car lights on and off. The weather you can change. Uh, there's a lot of different um, weather settings. Let's see, let's go through them here. Let's get a good like background while we set this up though. So we'll go, let's just face it right down the runway. So right now we have clear weather, clear post rain. That looks pretty cool. Cloudy, pretty bland. Cloudy post rain, light precipitation. That looks pretty cool too. Gale force winds. It doesn't really change much. Fog, whoa, that looks sick actually. I, dude, this little Civic spying on me, I like it. Wow, that actually looks really cool. That's a cool photo. Um, yeah, so let's go back to clear. We can also do, uh, I think we'll do default. Default is whatever it is outside of that per given moment when you go to take the photo in uh, the open world. Dawn, sunrise, morning, early afternoon, which really does change the, the color of the car a lot. Uh, you'll notice that the actual paint colors change pretty significantly with the uh, time of day. So like this is a very dark, darkish green. Let's zoom out a little bit for some quicker controls. Massive breaks. All right, so what I like to do, uh, my favorite thing is I like to take standstill photos for the most part, um, you know, what I'll do is I will set my aperture to about 15 to 20. Um, again, you only want to have aperture when your car is sitting still. You click focus, that'll give you that little bit of background blur. Um, but I also find that it helps the render of the car look a little better too. So when you click the focus button, you click X once you have nothing up and you get that nice background blur and just some it just looks really good um, another big thing you can do is turn the focus all the way up um, the broken the broca shape I'm, I'm not really sure how to say that but what it does is basically fills out all those tiny little areas that are blurred uh, it'll turn them into hexagons which is going to be your most coverage on the blur with as little um, fragmenting as possible you turn up your sampling all the way to quality. Um, again, if you're gonna be taking pictures, 
I say blast your uh, blast your settings as high as you can get them. Um, really, just turn them all the way to extreme because at this point you're just sitting for a photo. You're not driving. You're not doing anything else. So your your PC shouldn't be struggling in this situation, um, or your Xbox or whatever you're on. So yeah, so we got aperture. We're gonna set that. You get that nice background blur. You get some really good visuals here with extreme settings. Now, what I want to do is show you some rolling shots. This thing sounds insane. Alright, so now we're moving. Now, what you don't want to do is you don't want to keep that aperture on. I know this looks okay, and it looks like, oh, that looks fine. The problem is, is you see this artifacting right behind the car. Anytime that you have the aperture up while moving, you're going to get that major artifacting in the back. So like complete zero on aperture if you're moving. Uh, the only way that you can get rid of some kind of blur, a little bit more focus is to turn down the shutter speed. You don't want to turn it all the way down to zero because if you turn it all the way down to zero, then it looks like it kind of just looks odd because it looks like the car's it looks like the car is not moving. Um, I guess it doesn't look terrible, but it just looks like the car is sitting still. So you're not getting any of that moving effect. Um, I usually say around 20 on the shutter speed. The tracking I don't mess with. Um, because it just acts up kind of funky. Uh-uh. That doesn't look right. So we're going to go back to tracking. We're going to turn the shutter speed down to 20. You can turn your focus all the way up as well. Um, every once in a while on a nighttime shot like this, I will turn my exposure up to the highest I'll usually go is 60. I do most of my color editing uh, in Lightroom. But if I'm completely honest, if you're taking a picture, and you don't turn the exposure up before you take it into editing, you cannot edit what is not there. So let's get this. At this point now we can see pretty much all the details of the car completely there. Actually, I would say even underneath the, uh, the front bumper is pretty dark. Maybe we could go to 65, but that is gonna start to really mess with that color. So what we can do is maybe go into contrast and lower our contrast down a little. Mm, that doesn't look too great. Too high of contrast looks a little bit off in color wise. It starts to turn a little blue. I would say try not to go up or down more than 10 on exposure on or the contrast, excuse me. Uh, color usually is pretty spot on around 50 if you want to get weird with it like I, I do weird pictures all the time I'll do full-on sepia colors or black and white you know whatever if you're going for a black and white you just turn the color down to zero there's your black and white photo right there so you don't need Lightroom for that you don't need any of that um, the one thing I would say that you're not gonna be able to get is any kind of sharpening uh, clarity or anything like that inside of uh, the actual game but we're gonna turn quality up hexagon shape I'm gonna put it back to color now let's see what happens if we go the other way so the other way there's a lot of blue in this scene which truthfully doesn't look terrible right now but it doesn't look realistic uh, I do like to try and go for realism in most of my shots this is just way too much color. It, think of the color as the saturation. So we'll turn that down to 50. This car is so cool looking. Um, again, shutter speed though, we can turn up a little bit. And if you want to do aperture, if you don't care about the artifacting, you can do it. Um, but again, it's it's gonna look pretty weird. Like anytime you see like these lights up here, 
they're just very crusty looking they don't look real like that's the kind of stuff that gives it away if you can take some good photos um that kind of stuff just gives it away it, it makes it look like it's it's a game you know so like if you again no if you drop that aperture back down get a tiny bit of let's see maybe we'll just run through all the settings to shutter speed basically is how quickly the camera can capture the shot um, the higher you have that the more blur effect you're gonna get from things not in focus uh, so this is gonna be for stuff like the cactuses the the what's it called here right now the car is the only thing in focus so everything else is gonna be super super blurry but as we turn this down let's say we put it down to 20 you'll notice that the objects become more solid um, tracking I, I truthfully haven't figured out what that is so I don't use it in uh, anything focus is I, I want to say the focus outlines the car a little bit better makes the detailing of the car a little bit better I, I haven't really been able to prove much of a difference though um, if I'm completely honest exposure is going to be your lighting effects um, as far as how exposed the photo is so you can go all the way up and it's very very bright or you can go all the way down and it's very very dark so we'll set that back to 50 I'm gonna say 60 like I said don't go either way up or down more than 10 uh, aperture let's just put it to 100 because super super blurry could be cool for some kind of a cinematic shot but again you're gonna get these lights that just look like absolute garbage um, and it's just not going to be very realistic. Oh no. So let's drop that down to zero. I highly recommend zero on any moving shots. Uh, stand still about that 15 to 20 range. If you want to get a little bit more crazy with it, you can go to 10 or go to like 25, 30. Uh, hexagon again, that's going to fill in those blurred images a little bit better. Sampling for quality, that is going to help in rendering your shot. Contrast, uh, so the contrast is your difference from light to dark. So you can see the grays, you start to see these shadows get really, really dark the higher you get. That's going to make your darks very dark and your lights a little bit lighter. Um, that doesn't look real. So we're gonna go back to 50, which is standard. Um, color, this is again, your saturation. Uh, 50 is usually where you wanna be. Sometimes you can try to pull a little bit more color out. Height, again, don't recommend going more than 10. Brightness, I don't usually use the brightness. Um, I usually use the exposure to get my details that I want in the car. Um, say you have a, a tow hook or something or you know a door handle that's not really standing out in the photo you can adjust the exposure or the brightness to get that detail on screen so that you're able to go into Lightroom um, and then apply you know either a mask to that detail and really make it pop sepia this is gonna yellow out your photo Kind of looks a little bit more black and white in this, but really just yanks all the color out of the photo. Um, it gives it that old timey look. Let's drop that down. Vigenet, that's going to give you a little bit of a border. Uh, it's like a black border that comes around the screen. It's like you're looking through a looking through like a little bit of a tunnel. Oh yeah. I personally do not like Viginet on my photos, uh, at least on car photos, I would say. I just think they look kind of odd. Um, temperature is gonna be just your overall vibe of the photo. Uh, the higher you go, the warmer it gets. The lower you go, the colder it gets. So we drop it down to a zero. You see it gets a little icy blue. 
If we go all the way up to 100, we're getting like some desert sun here. You can see the lights changed from white to yellow. Uh, it's a little bit harder to see at nighttime. Maybe we can make it daytime. Let's do sunrise. I think that'll kind of point it out a little bit more. You see a lot of yellow in the atmosphere. And then once we drop this down, again, icy blue. So try to leave that at 50. Um, one or two ticks, either way, is really going to be all you need. You don't you don't need a whole lot. Oh, actually looks kind of nice. So let's do. You see, I I don't know if you'll be able to tell on the video, but one tick in in either direction makes a world of difference. So like you go to 51, 52, and you start to see that yellowish right away. You go to 49, 48, you start to see that blueness right away. Again, time of day, weather, car lights, steering, driver, character. Uh, so I probably have to stop the car. And then we can get our uh, guy up in here. I think my headset turned off. So let's get uh, let's get my driver out here. Oh yeah. So there's all kinds of different emotes for this. Uh, right front, left front, blah blah blah. You can move them all around. But you can also do all the different emotes. I've taken, I maybe think, a couple pictures like this. It's kind of a gimmick, but it is what it is. Uh, the crowds you can turn on and off. Creatures on and off. This is deer, bugs, birds, uh, whatever. Guidelines. Actually, this is pretty new. I haven't seen this before. But this is for portrait mode. Which is kind of cool. It shows you the borders of what it would be used. One to one. Uh, portrait mode would be TikTok and Instagram. Oh, actually, no, not Instagram. TikTok, YouTube Shorts. Uh, one to one would be Instagram, I believe. Four by three, 21 by nine. It's actually kind of cool. They just added that. I didn't see that before. Um, but other than that, guys, I want to say, you know, if we want to get a really good photo, let's end you off with one. Driver disabled. I, I don't like to have the driver in the car, especially if the car is sitting still. Let's find a really good time frame here. I think sunrise and sunset are probably your nicest looking ones. Ooh, that's pretty nice. Car lights enabled. Since we're sitting still, we'll bump it up to about 20. Yeah, guys, that's uh, that's how you do it. It's all about getting rid of that blur, finding the right angles, what makes it look good. I would say a lot of zoom helps. Um, do some like real cinematic looking shots like that. Once you're once you're where you want to be, you want to hit the X button to uh, focus it. But yeah, you can get some really cool looking shots on Forza Horizon 5. Um, if you guys have any questions or if you guys want to check out any of my work, um, I have an Instagram that I post to occasionally. Um, also, I use it for like YouTube shorts and occasional Facebook posts. And, you know, I'm on pretty much all the uh, Facebook posts on um, all the Forza, all the different Forza pages. So... 
you guys want to see any of my stuff, check it out. Otherwise, uh, please like and subscribe, and I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks so much. See ya.